Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 30 of Be With Me. We are concluding everything that Jesus has to say before his passion, his arrest, his Gethsemane, all the suffering that's coming. But there's one more chapter where he does something for a whole chapter, and that is pray. It's one of the largest, longest prayers in Scripture. It might be the longest Um and it's a, in John chapter 17, and it's called the High Priestly Prayer. Jesus prays for himself, then he prays for his disciples, and then he prays for you and me. That is the people that are going to believe through the ministry of the disciples. So it's an amazing and uh, encouraging passage. Um, I was going to title this, Is Anyone Listening? Or maybe Be Encouraged. The answer is yes. Someone is listening. Let's let's listen to what Jesus does and then learn from him and be encouraged today. I was so encouraged in just thinking about uh, all the things that Jesus has done for us. So here we go. This is John chapter 17, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven. I want to stop right there. So... There's a reality here. So he looks up to heaven, a posture of prayer, uh, physically where heaven is. I don't think it matters. Uh, but he, he he looks up and there's something beyond me here. And he speaks directly to the Father and says then, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you. Verse 2, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all that you have given him. Verse 3, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Let me just pause there for just a second. Everybody you know, every person that you know is eternal. Every human being you see today is eternal. They're going to live forever. Every demon is eternal. Every angel is eternal. Every cherubim is eternal. I'm not sure about crickets. Are they, are they eternal? Or dogs? Are they eternal? But the previous beings, spiritual beings, are definitely all eternal. So everybody is going to live forever. Now, the question is, are you going to live forever in eternal life or eternal uh, damnation? He defines here what is, so what's the difference? The difference is eternal life is that they know you, the only true God. So it's a knowledge of God, and it's going to be a being with God rather than separation for God. So that's the that's the thing that's good. That's going to separate the eternal lives from the eternal uh, non lives. Here we go. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. i got to pause again there. What this is saying is that the world was not eternal. The, the material aspects of the world didn't start uh, forever ago. They started with a creation before the world existed. So all the stuff that uh, we see is founded on the creation of the Lord. So that's powerful and amazing. Mm-hmm. Verse 6, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Verse 9, I am praying for them. What? So here he's he's switching in verse 9 here now. He's switching from praying for himself to praying for his disciples, or praying for the uh, current disciples, the people that are walking with him there. So that would be the disciples, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Nicodemus, 
uh, his family, James, Matthew, people that had laid eyes on him. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. All right, so I think that this passage is a great encouragement to us. Even, for number one, even Jesus prayed. Uh, so I think that's an encouragement for us. And is there anybody listening? The answer is yes. Even Jesus lifts his eyes up that there's a father up there who's listening to us. And now we know that Jesus is up there also and interceding for us, which is another another point. So is anybody there? Yes. Is anybody listening? The answer is yes. It, does he care? Yes. You, we see here in the in the passage that Jesus cares for himself. And then he's, he's transitioning now to start praying for the disciples. And in starting in verse 20, which we're not there yet today, he's going to pray for you and me. So just that will blow us, blow us away. So is he listening? Yes. Does he care? Yes. And he's be, being made known and glorified, and he gives eternal life. What is eternal life? It's knowing him. It's having himself be manifested to us. And then the part that it is encouraging also is that we're included. We're family here. So what is God like? Am I known? Am I seen? Am I loved? This is all in the past. The answer is yes. Am I included in his family? Yes. Am I heard? Am I prayers heard? Yes. Am I, for, am, am I a forever person? Am I eternal? Yes. And am I prayed for? Yes. Am I cared for by the Lord? So my encouragement today is we should be encouraged Jesus prayed, we should pray, and then our, our assignment today, how about this? Let's just pray for one thing. Maybe it's that you would see God. Maybe it would be for help with a particular temptation. Maybe it would be that he would show himself to you in a certain way. I thank you for listening. There's much more to come in this high priestly prayer I'm sure I haven't done it justice today, but stick around. Maybe I will tomorrow. See you tomorrow.